Thank, thank, thank you, Ambassador Quinn, for that kind introduction. It's most often the case your predictions don't come true. So, um, uh, not you, but all of us are challenged to predict how things will go in the world. That's why today is so special, why innovation, creativity matter, that risk-taking form the heart of how it is that we think about making sure we can feed that next billion people. It takes risk-takers, people prepared to make predictions, um, those who are willing to accept those risks. Uh, welcome all to the State Department. Uh, we're gathered here today to honor uh, Mr. Simon Groot, who joins an incredibly distinguished list of entrepreneurs, scientists, and others who have pioneered these innovations that continue to feed the world. It's not an exaggeration by any stretch. Um, all of these men and women walk in the giant footsteps of Dr. Norman, Norman Borlaug, the founder of this prize. Uh, he was an Iowan, but as a Kansan, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give him a free pass for missing by just a couple hundred miles to the north. Um, he dedicated his life to bringing disease-resistant uh, species of wheat and rice. Some estimates say more than a billion lives. Uh, that's with a B, billion. There's no prize big enough to recognize this amazing work. Uh, the work of agriculture innovators is unfortunately only growing more important today. Uh, more than 820 million people, as we sit here in this beautiful space, uh, suffer from chronic hunger. There isn't a single cause, but we know that majority live in conflict zones or fragile states. In Venezuela, for example, more than 60% of the country goes to bed hungry each and every night, and many have resorted to rummaging through garbage bins to feed themselves and their children. Malnourishment is so widespread that Venezuelans refer to it as the Maduro diet. We all have an obligation to work each of these problems. It isn't just a human tragedy when we see hunger. Uh, when it takes hold of a country, it can perpetrate destructive cycle of crime and violence and instability. Uh, we've taken on this challenge here at the State Department. It's why we are so honored to host this today. Our diplomats work with local leaders, local governments to respond to food crises all across the world. And recipients of U.S. food assistance include the war-weary people of Syria, South Sudan, Somalia, Nigeria, and Yemen. We've stationed aid in Colombia for the Venezuelan people, and we're ready to do more in each of these locations. But those of you who have worked on this issue for so long know that food assistance is in some sense a Band-Aid, a necessary one, um, but we need a cure. Um, bright minds in the public and private sectors are working on this mission, but if I had to bet, the solution probably won't come from government, uh, which leads me to Simon Groot. Uh, as Ambassador Quinn described, a sixth-generation Dutch seedsman he spent much of his life running the East West Seed Company. The remarkable improvements he made to these tropical vegetable seeds helped small farmers in developing nations produce more food and, importantly, get more income for themselves and their families, curbing hunger and stimulating economic growth wherever these seeds went. The company provides free information on the best cultivation methods of farmers, which in turn helps customers and increase demand for its seeds, a truly virtuous cycle. Coincidentally, I just left uh, Mr. Groot's home country of the Netherlands uh, last week. I was there for something called the Global Entrepreneurship Summit. It was a great crowd, a wonderful gathering of creative risk-taking people, most of them young, looking to make that next great information. And I talked there about the power of private sector entrepreneurship and the risk-takers to solve all sorts of the world's problems. Unlike government in innovators don't view problems as obstacles, they view them as opportunities. Uh, we all know, you all know this better than I do, the solutions to quelling hunger and malnutrition are incredibly complex. Uh, but one thing they have in common is innovation. Like those, those innovations, like those devised by Dr. Borleg and now what we, uh, we recognize the great work of Mr. Groot. Already the recipients of the World Food Prize have fed billions of people. And yet the crisis persists. Don't get discouraged. That's, just the opposite of the message today. It's reasons to keep up fighting, keep up this good work, continue this effort that we're in today. I'm confident with the continued efforts of Simon Groot and many of you in this room, we can solve the crisis the way it needs to be solved, for good. Congratulations again to Mr. Groot, and thank you all for being here today.